Now let's delve into the actual SSIS process a bit. In the advanced ETL automation process, really the SSIS packages simply act as the orchestration piece for the process. All the package is really doing is passing data from one database to another and then calling the auto-generated store procedures, which actually do all the work. Since the process is really identical for almost every table, you can simply create a new package uh, and then copy the SSIS steps from a previous package over to the new one. Then obviously you will want to rename your package uh, to something more meaningful. I like to follow a naming convention that refers directly to the DIM table being processed. So I'll rename this one DIM Contracts. Now all that's really left to do is to change the names of the objects being called by the packages um, to the new DIM table name. In our example, all I'm doing is changing the name from DIM Client Sharing to DIM Contracts. As you can see, this is a pretty straightforward uh, and simple process that's basically the same for every step. Uh, this makes it simple to create and manage the SSIS process and really easy to add new tables to the SSIS flow. Now, you'll notice that I have a couple of errors in the data flow task. The first one is related to a variable which holds a row count, which is used to check for updated records. If this value is zero, then the process simply stops for this part of the package process because there are no records to be updated in the data warehouse. Now, the next error is related to uh, data mapping for the new columns. And this is because we're reusing columns from a different table set, thus the mapping is off. So what I like to do is uh, simply delete the destination table object and add a new one. Uh, then identify the staging table name in the target database. This automates the mapping of the columns based on the column name and just makes it a much simpler process to manage. Uh, you could simply rename the target table and then manually do the mapping, but I find this way to be much uh, easier to manage and less um, error prone. Once you have created the new SSIS destination control, then you will need to uh, select the SSIS staging table, which was also auto-generated by the SQL automation process. This is the table that holds the data while it's being processed into the new DIM table structure. So we're going to drag down until we find the SSIS schema and the associated TBL contracts table. Then you simply connect it to the previous step and SSIS automates the mapping of the columns for you. So as you can see, when you have a lot of data columns, it's just simpler to um, create a new destination object and let, let SSIS handle the mapping for you. The next step in the package calls the new controller sprock, which was also generated for you by the SQL automation process. This stored procedure controls the flow, which handles all of the CRUD for the updates on the data warehouse side. The next step truncates the update PKs table in the origin database to prepare for the newly updated PK values. Um, as records are processed into the DIM table structure, the PK IDs are updated to zero, and any records which did not update for any reason are written to an error log, which will be discussed in a later video. The next data flow task uh, transfers the updated PKID values from the data warehouse back over to the update PKs table on the origin database. It basically selects the PKID values which have a modified type ID of zero and transfers them over to the correlating update PKs table in the origin database, which you can really consider as a staging table for those updates back in the origin.
And finally, the last step of the process executes the uh, keys reset sprock, which updates all of the modified type ID values in the corresponding flags table back to zero. Now, as I said, um, any of the records which did not update for any reason don't get reset. So the next time that UTL runs, it'll try to process those records again. And hopefully, you know, whatever was causing the problem before will be resolved. Now that we have finished updating all of the components in our SSIS package, we'll give it a test run for the first time to ensure all of the components were renamed correctly. We can switch over to the first data flow task to watch the number of records that are being processed. As you can see, the rows are being pushed over from the origin database table to the SSIS staging table in the data warehouse. And this particular table has just over 50,000 rows, so it takes a little bit of time to process, but it's not that bad. Since the rest of the process is calling highly tuned stored procedures, it all executes extremely fast compared to the initial data transfer, and the entire process completes in a matter of seconds. Now let's uh, go back to our newly populated DIM contracts table and ensure that the data actually made it there correctly. We'll simply select the top thousand records and it does appear that the data is there. So now let's look at our keys table to ensure the data also made it there correctly. Another select top 1000 and there's the data. Now let's jump back to our origin database. And we will scroll down and find the TBL contracts flags table. We'll open that up, do a select top 1000, and ensure that all of the modified type ID has been reset to zero. Does appear that they have, so that looks good. And that completes the SSIS portion of the ETL process.